26. England Samoa then mark 30 points to 10 in favour of the wall of White. It was a it was a shuffled around team in the end with some injury withdrawals and a bit of a surprise, a couple of surprise selections as well with Ratchford in at full back for probably the big standout surprise. Um, but England went well in this. Yeah, we start with Frogmore who says it all makes sense now since sele- since selections I was baffled, baffled as to why Ratchford does full back and Hardacre was sent there with Percy missing out. If Wayne had played them in position it wouldn't have been fair. England was too <laughs> strong. Samoa showed passion and fight but couldn't finish Wayne Bennett FC. There you go. Frogmore Roberts had a good solid performance. I half expected us to lose uh, but the late tries gave the score a flattering tint. For all the controversy Hyneton played well. Have to say Brown was the better halfback. Ratchford did okay but looked dodging under the high ball a couple of times overall it was worth the trip methinks Wyatt Joe said a good performance overall lots of energy and intensity up front to get over the top of a physical Samoan side still work to be done before the World Cup but the real story is the magic effect the, the Australian air had on Pinhead Brown some lovely touches from him in the second half this version of him could come back north please very good Tyler Caspan said a very good first half against a disappointing Samoa side more even in the second with a few errors creeping in but on the whole a good display and all returning home injury free Free. St David said, still suffering after Saints cap- capitulation and fuming about Bennett's twat selections, I nearly didn't bother. Caved in and watched. Well worth 3.49. Very good England performance. Sam Burgess, Hodgson, Graham, Whitehead, McMeekin and Lockers looked some pack. Haas did well and Jerry was excellent. Lots to be encouraged by. Brian Davy says, the whole experience was sensational. The England supporters block was surrounded by Samoans, Tongans and Crummels. Our support consisted of me and about 50 expats. The atmosphere was of pure joy at watching rugby league. It was a real tonic to sit with people who wanted to enjoy the game for what it is entertainment. I thought England were superb in the first half and my new man crush Kevin Brown had his best game for England. Rich Wilkinson said, solid performance by England. Thought Gail and Brown did a, did a job to say they are probably our second string. Everyone chipped in. Flanders was poor second half but was cracking in the first 40. Hodgson was class. Even the Aussies lads had a dig. McQueen needs to be much better to lock in a spot. Hyington got a pass mark. And Paul Ludo Lewis gets the final word on this one. Said a great England performance considering the players missing and the strength of the opposition. Big meters from the pack and the backs all look threatening too. What a way to start the weekend. As for the Aussie lads in the side, well, it can only enhance, enhance Liam Farrell's chances. Only in rugby league, though, could I get sent an email telling me how to access the game a full 24 hours after the match had finished. Um, Did you enjoy it? I didn't see it. I've, the, seen, the the late, I've seen the scores. The late McGilvery try... Added added the polish to the scoreline that England deserved. Certainly at half time, England weren't as far ahead as they deserved to be. Mm-hmm. They were they were by far the better team. And in the first half, they were led they were led by Luke Gale, who who was exceptional mm-hmm. uh, in terms of around the park. But really, it was it was the forward pack that were doing all the hard work. If anything, this game couldn't have gone any better because. It justified some of the things that Bennett did enough for us to restore some of the confidence about the question. I was questioning why Ratchford wasn't originally on the plane, but now he starts in fullback ahead of the best fullback in the Super League, who starts in centre ahead of the best centre so far, the best left centre so far in the Super League. Yeah. And I was questioning those things like most people were, but they all worked out well. Hardacre did fine, Ratchford did fine, Akeda was that one kick he took by the touchline, but other than that, everything he did was spot on, yeah. I thought. Um, and so all the backs worked really well together in, in how they played Gale was great in the first half Brown's kicking left a little bit to be desired for certain periods of the game but he grew into the game and obviously he's coming from a low confidence base with how poorly he's been playing in the, in, in the Warrington side and, yeah. and not being necessarily first choice at the moment mm. but he grew into it and put some really nice touches in, in the second half set, set up a couple of tries as it went on and You've got to credit him for coming back and having a strong second half performance. Yeah, definitely. Uh, certainly, he was he was he was there or thereabouts, but putting a few naff kicks in the first half and a couple of bad positional kicks in the second half, mm. but some really nice touches to complement that. Gale for me now is nailed on in the side. Yeah, um, I sort of feel. I feel he was the better of the two halves. Some people think otherwise. I feel Gale was the better of the two halves over the whole 80 minutes. So who goes next to him then? Williams Widdop. or Widdop? Widdop. I'm putting Widdop in next to him. Widdop's the leader in the clubhouse yeah. for me at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, Very good. But, uh, yeah, so it all went well, like I said, because that selection question about how he shifted the backs around actually did worked out properly mm. and, and did fine. The late call-ups worked out, did fine. 
and McQueen was shit. So that worked out fine. Yeah. Because he came on, knocked on, barely got near a couple of tackles, um, just about hung on in a couple of them before he missed a couple of them. And then was only on the field for about 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, so there you go. So I think I think all in all, Harrington was Harrington was fine. The other forwards, I mean that that pass that O'Loughlin put in for the first try. Hey, yeah. hey, Sean O'Loughlin, all you want, show me another fucking forward in the world of rugby league Pops that does that. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I mean, it, it was it was it was good. It was good for England to get this game mm. go the way it went. Yeah, definitely, certainly, very good. Well, there we are. So, into the championship then. It was round right 13. Yeah. All the forwards got 100 metres or nearly 100 metres, apart from McMeekin, who How did he look? didn't have, didn't have a lot of minutes. Looked okay in his first spell. Didn't really get involved in his second spell. Okay. Into the championship then, round 13. Battle of Bulldogs were defeated at home 4 points to 68 by Hull KR. Dewsbury lost at home 18 points to 36 against Halifax. London Broncos had a 72 points to 12 win over the Oldham Ruffians. Rochdale lost at home 8 points to Featherston's 38. Sheffield Eagles romped home over a poor-looking Bradford side 52 points to 16. And Swinton Lions got a 27 points to 20 victory over High Flying Toulouse. Massive result for them. Yeah, that's worrying ahead of the cup. Uh, big changes near the top. Uh, for Toulouse dropping into a three-way tie for third with London leapfrogging Halifax into fourth on points difference just below uh, or tied with, with Toulouse really near the bottom Swinton Paul a little further away from the bottom two who remain unchanged there you go round six of League One then it was Baron 58 South Wales 16 Toronto's first ever game on home turf was a 62 points to 12 win over the Oxford Blues mark. Yes, yeah, 6,218 was the crowd they announced. That must have been the crowd that they reached because everyone turned up halfway through the first half, it felt like. Yeah, and a lot of people were getting Well, you know what the result's going to be. It you know they're going to win. Yeah, it seemed like a, a good atmosphere because of all that sort of stuff. Like people milling around getting beers and mm. whatever. Yeah. Anyway, Fat Boy Rob said, easy win, good fights, decent crowd. The pitch looked like the ones I used to play five a side on in 30 years ago. And Tim Griffiths, who was there, so we've given him like a little bit of a longer, yeah. longer lead in, but obviously. Obviously, I think it's well worth it. He said, quite an eventful trip so far, but just to come muddle when we got here and the ground looked very unprepared at training on Friday. Also, it was tipping down, which made it very unpleasant. Game day and it all came together. Brian Noble appeared to have come to the ground by Husky and pushed past me in the press box to boot. They even recruited their own ultras, complete with pyro and drums. The game itself was much better than expected. Oxford forcing the Wolf Pack to go round them rather than through the middle and not taking a backward step against the physicality shown by Toronto. Jake Emmett deserves a lengthy ban in three in three stages. One for the initial yellow, two for the further fighting that resulted in the red and three for the sarcastic gesture towards the official as he was on his way. Really proud of all the Oxford boys. Takes massive effort to give up three days of work, travel further than most have ever done in their lives and stand up the way they did. Hope Toronto can keep their fans going forward as it could be amazing for the game. It's been a great experience so far. We'll send more of the Travel Diary next week. Fantastic. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, he's been doing Tim. the tourist bits this week. I've spotted. Yeah, he, watched, he took in a, uh, a Raptors game as well uh, in the playoffs, but I think they lost to the Cavaliers. Uh, it was Hemel 18, working uh, Did you watch the Toronto game? No. Oh, did you see the Drake, Jake Emmett stuff? No. What's he done? Well, he was mouthing off anyway. Well, he was being himself, basically. Well, he was being a Paul Rowley forward. Yeah. Um, it, it kept, but Agro kept building up all throughout the game. Uh, the referee maybe didn't help that because he started just giving penalties and penalties and penalties to Oxford, which wound up all the Toronto forwards because they weren't all dead set penalties, okay, right. to be honest. Um, and Oxford being so... Tigerish yeah. and committed, and, and not rolling over and caving into mm. some of these people who seem to think that that's what they should just turn up and deserve. Yeah. Didn't work well in in favour of the the powder keg. Um, but yeah, it, it sort of kicked off a few times, but really kicked off with this Jake Emmett incident. And he got simbin, and as he was walking off, he couldn't take that. He could he, he had to leave the pitch and walk back on and started a mass brawl. Uh, threw some proper punches, got everyone involved in it. Ended up with him getting sent off, and uh, so he was sent off whilst leaving the field for being simbined, or whilst not, but still mm. sent off whilst being simbined. And then um, a couple of other lads left the field as well. One from either side. Both the both the standoffs had a bit of a scrap. Right. So so they went, 
and yeah, it was just a, a bit of a mess. I think in the end, Liam K was simmed as well. So the the Wolfpack ended up with ten players for the last couple of minutes. Fucking hell! <laughs> there you go, then. Yeah. So so that aside, the the you know it looked early doors like the crowd wasn't going to be anywhere near the sort of eight to ten thousand that we were told were going to be there. Right. In the end, six and a half thousand. I want like a grey, miserableish day in Toronto. And they were saying it was much colder than it normally is for that time of the year. Lots of people looked wrapped up wearing hats and scarves and coats and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that, that quashed the party a little bit, but mm. it was promising, certainly. Yeah, certainly. And the Wolfpack, when they do play, so it's just like Lee. It's just like Lee two years ago. It's the it. same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was Hamill 18, Workington 66. Whitehaven were 34 points to 20 winners over Newcastle. Uh, Coventry went down 24 points to 44 against the Keithley Cougars. Doncaster played out a 28-point draw with the London Scholars, though, Mark. We did a good job picking this one out as Game of the Week, didn't yes, we? Yes, did it certainly indeed. certainly lived up, didn't it, for us? Yeah. Um, yeah, Ethan O'Gorman watched it. He said, what a game. Doncaster led 22-4 at half-time, but threw, threw it away in the second half. Poor refereeing decisions meant the scholars drew level. Quote of the week by Gary. I guess he means Gary Thorne. Is it Gary Thorne in the Doncaster coach? Yes. He knocked on the stupid bastard. Full-time 28 all. There you go. Hunslet with 36 points to 26 winners over North Wales. And Gloucestershire lost at home. The all goals going down 10 points to 56 against the York City Knights. Yeah, disappointing. A uh, couple of all goals fans who got in touch. Lee Randall said, I don't know if it... If to laugh or to cry, it was a shambles from the first whistle to the last. At least a positive is we know we're behind the where, but where we know where behind the posts are. Where's the side that started the season so promising? Let's hope there's a better performance next week. Come on, you all goals. And Lovely. Alan Witt said, I could use all the characters moaning about poor display from the home team, not doing the basics, but York played very well and picked the all goals apart, racing to an 18 0 lead and didn't let up. Some very good players in their team who clicked today. We know we're going to get turned over in some games, but today was very disappointing. Next up is the Crusaders again. Come Body of all goals. Okay, uh, so what does that do to the to League One standings then, Mark? Well, there's no real changes in the makeup of the table. Toronto and Barrow continue to roll all in front of them at the top two, unbeaten. London Scholars are top ranked Southern side ahead of the likes of Doncaster, Workington, York, and Newcastle. So there you go, that's some good company. So some other games to uh, give you some feedback on then. Carcassonne versus Lesignon. Uh, Alan Walker got in touch with us on that one, didn't he, Mark? Yeah, do you want to read these? Yes, he says, back from the bench in time for. Happy Canaries as Fakasan were worthy winners 30 points to 24 of the Coupe Lord Derby French action. Please, Mark, well, I'm afraid it's me now, mate. The Coupe Lord Derby. Um, despite. Super League legends Jamal Fakir, Kadas and Pomeroy. Let's were outplayed across the park by a dynamic ASC Trez. Man of the match, Hakim Meloudi. Skill, control, tries and kicks. Mentions for Gresike and Albert. Great game. And Brian... Didn't know Pomeroy was still knocking around. No, Big Ben, eh? Just yeah. loved, loves the life in France then. Maybe they haven't, haven't realised they're still playing, so have forgotten to apply that drugs back. Possibly <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the Gillaroos took on the Kiwi Ferns as well this weekend. Mark Bride Davies got in touch. He said, a very entertaining game with plenty of attacking and open rugby. A very English type of game rather than the grunt and grind of the NRL. Aussies were always on top, although New Zealand had their chances. And only some superb goal line defence kept them out. Some really big hits got the sizeable crowd involved. There's something quite enjoyable about watching a bunch of fit lasses bash each other about. The Aussies won six. 16-4 only mild sexism there but I will let I you think off. he means physically fit ah I see yeah ok well then I will definitely lay him off uh, but then the junior kangaroos also took on the junior kiwis and Brian gave us a report on that one as well he's been a busy boy Brian Davies this week I yeah, love I think, it I think we need thank to, you Brian we need to get him on sometime when he's I know he's got a few he's got basically he's got he gets back goes to a game goes on holiday yeah. and then it's magic weekend yeah. but we hopefully will be able to catch up with him at the Summer Bash and maybe have a bit yeah, of a chat with him that stuff, one, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, so back to the Junior Kangaroos versus the Junior Kiwis. Bryce says, Oz scored at will and the Kiwis only had three attacks in the first half and two ended with a poor kick. Some of the ball handling was sublime, especially by the Kiwis in the second half. Aided by an Australian sin binning, the Kiwis started to throw the ball about and scored several fine tries, eventually losing 46 points to 22. Roddy Croft, the Australian captain, was man of the match and thank the Austric Aus- no, excuse me and thank the Aussie coaches Rosie, Woodsy and Bedsy. He'll cause England trouble in years to come. So all that remains for us to do now, having taken a look back at Rugby League, is to bring you our previews and predictions for round six of the Challenge Cup. <laughs> 